Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I am going to be showing you how to make techno like Thomas Schumacher and Victor Ruiz. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets. All of that stuff from this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available and has been since yesterday. And yeah, let's get started. So this will be heard in the intro. We're at 128 BPM, and the first sound that we have here are these stabs, which sound like this. So the way these are made is using FM synthesis, you can see both of these are made using operator. They're both just playing one note, just A, that's the key that we're in with this track. And yeah, really simple, they're just kind of like, you, know, you can hear like this first one plays the main part. And then we just have that little do 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 with the second one to kind of carry it into the next part. Because if we just had the first step. You know, it feels a little bit empty in that part, but if you add in these little do 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 at the end of that two bars, you can hear like it really carries the energy along a little bit nicer. So, for the sound on the first one, like I said, it's made using operator, and what this is, is, is this pretty simple FM sine wave stab here. You can see, yeah, we just got three sine waves, and then what's happening is basically the first two are creating that sort of like donk sound. And then when we bring in the third oscillator, you can hear it gives it that kind of like deeper, more aggressive sort of thing in there. So yeah, you can see those are set like that. We've got those going into a low pass here, so without it. And then with it, it just makes this a little bit more plucky, a little bit more controlled sounding. And yeah, and then we just have a bit of echo, just done eighth notes. Just to give it a little bit of space, as well as a bit of reverb. You can see this is very short. Then we just have some drum bus to fatten it up a little bit. And then a bit of a high pass filter. And then on the second stab. This is also made using FM synthesis. You can see, like I said, it's a pretty similar patch actually. Again, just three sine waves. You know, really simple. The main key with these type of stabs are these envelopes. Like the way that you set those is what's really going to give it that tight sort of plucky sound. And you can see, this is set like this. We got the chorus pitches on the second and third oscillator like that. I've got those going into a low pass, which is just set like this to make it a bit more plucky. And yeah, and then on this one, we have an echo doing dotted eighth notes, a very short reverb, just like you saw on the first stab, and then a bit of drum bus like you saw on the first stab to fatten it up, and then a high pass filter. And that is it for the stab. So like I said, very simple. The key is just to get the right, like, very fat full sound like this. Like you don't want anything too small. You just need to make sure it's as big and as fat as what we're going for here. After that we have this drone which sounds like this. So the way this is made you can see it's just this one long A being held out and then what's happening here is we're using two saw waves inside of analog here. They're detuned a little going into a bandpass filter which has a little bit of an LFO on it. So that's just kind of moving it around to give it a little bit more movement and bring it to life a bit. Then we got the amp envelope set like this. There's the LFO. You can see it's pretty slow. And then the last thing that we have here inside the synth is just a bit of unison to make it a bit bigger. And then this vibrato. The vibrato is what's giving it that like, like thing where it's pitching around. So yeah, we just have that with like a really slow rate, pretty high amount. And that's how we do that, and that just kind of gives it a bit more depth and makes it a bit more interesting and a bit darker as well. Just having that constantly moving around. Then we just have a bit of chorus to spread the sound out, a little bit of reverb to give it some space. And then I have this audio effect rack here, which is doing the Haas effect. So if you don't know what the Haas effect is, it's where you take a sound, split it into the left signal and the right signal. And then you move one of them slightly forward. You can see here I've done it with a delay. And then what happens is because you're hearing the left ear, or in this case it's the left ear, it could be either. But because you're hearing one ear right after when you're hearing the other one, it kind of like creates this effect where you feel like, you know, you're hearing something much bigger than what it really is. Really, it's just the same sound sl at slightly different times in each ear. But again, this creates this really big, wide sound. And yeah, this is important for this sound to really make it sound as big as possible. Like, if I turn this off, it's a little bit more flat sounding. 
But then when we bring it in, it really brings it to life. And yeah, so that is on there. And then we show a bit of drum bus, kind of making it a bit bigger. This also brings out that reverb a bit. And then finally, just an auto pan, which is kind of simulating the inside chain to the kick. And that is it for the drone. And speaking of the kick, we have the kick after that, which sounds like this. So this is just a straightforward rumble kick. You can see we've started with the sample. So the main thing here, to be honest with you, I think is the sample and just like what you use for the kick going into the rumble because like, you know, this is all pretty straightforward rumble, you know, pretty straightforward processing, but it's this like very clicky while still being very punchy and deep techno kick. As you can hear, yeah, there's the original sample, and it's just like, this is what you want to look for, is something kind of clicky like this, with a lot of body to it, the way that these kind of techno kicks need to have, and if you're looking for this sample, link is in the description, but yeah, so I've got that here, <laughs> and then you can see it's going into this rumble, tr this rumble group here, which is basically just a rack with two chains, you can see there's a dry chain, and then we have the rumble. And so the way the rumble is being created is using delay. What it is, is it's a delay. Which you may notice I turned the filter off on the delay. That's very important. I'll show you in a second why. But yeah, it's a delay. Going into this amp, which you can hear. Makes it a lot more crunchy, but it also really brings out that no end. And then we just low pass it. And there we go, we get the rumble. And then I have that side chain to the dry kick. And I also have this EQ here just cutting at 100 hertz and boosting the lawn. So yeah, really straightforward rumble. The reason why the filter on the delay makes a difference is this. Listen to what happens if I have it on. And then I'll turn it off. You notice how the times when it was on, it had it's like missing that really deep sub frequency. Which in some styles of techno that works really well. With some kicks I've seen that work really well. But with this, like with what I've heard in these guys' tracks and like the tracks they've done together, and just this style of techno in general, you really need to let those deep sub frequencies come through. So cutting off the filter on the delay and just letting it be the full signal is what you want to do. So then after the rumble rock, I just have a bit of drum bus. This is not only making the kick fatter and more full, but it's also really helping to glue the kick and the rumble together. You know, it's kind of like the way you would process, like if you have a kick and a bass line and a house track, or even in techno, you know, where you use a bass line and not just a rumble like this. A lot of times, like, you know, you need to do some sort of processing like this to sort of glue it together. Same deal here. So here's without this. And then with it, you can hear the difference. It's like, even if we make this super loud, without the drum bus, it's still not as fat as it could be. And yeah, that's it for the kick. Like I said, it's really simple. If you get a really good sample going into it, you don't need to do a whole lot. You just need to give it the rumble, fatten it up a little bit, and there it is. And yeah, so that's it for the kick. After that, we have the hi-hats, which all together sound like this. So I'll just go kind of down the line here. The first thing is this main hi-hat. This is the one you hear playing on the upbeats. With this one, it's mostly about the sound, just choosing this very fat, mid-rangey sort of sound like this. That has a lot of attack to it, you know, and not just like getting something that's like, like an 808 hi-hat or something, but something very fat and full like this. After that, we have this operator hi-hat, which sounds like this. This one's really simple. This is just playing straight 16th notes. And what I've done here is I've got some white noise with a short envelope. Here's with no filter. And then we just put it into a band pass like this. And you get this really nice full sounding hi-hat. And then I just have that high pass a little. So yeah, really simple layer. I've done this a lot in my videos before. But it's a really great way to make some hi-hats that, again, aren't just going to be like a little 808 hi-hat or something like that. But you can really have control over how it sounds and create your own thing and get something really fat like this. After this, we have this 909 hi-hat, which sounds like this. 
So this is just kind of playing a few extra little things because we have these. And then you just throw that in there. And it's just adding like some extra percussion, you know, it makes it so it's not just a simple chick 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 that you hear in every single track. But there's something a little bit different and special to this one. So with this, we just had this 909 hi-hat, got it going through some echo, dotted eighth notes, a little bit of saturation to make it a bit stronger, and then a bit of a high bass filter. And that's it for that one. But this is a really good way to add again like just some extra sort of percussion and background elements into your track. After that, the last layer of hi-hats, or I guess you could call it the cymbals that we have here, is this ride, which sounds like this. So this one's really straightforward. It's just doing that kind of thing with the velocity, you can see. And then, yeah, it's just like that. And then we have this echo on here. And the purpose of the echo is to make this really wide. You can see I have the left ear and the right ear at two different times. They're both really fast, so you're still getting the same thing, but it's just really wide now. And you can hear this kind of in a different place in the mix versus if I turn the echo off. You know, it's kind of fighting for that same space in the middle with the other hi-hats, but now... It's nicely opened up. And yeah, and then after that, I have all those hi-hats, I guess symbols, I should say, in a group with just a little bit of reverb and a little bit of saturator. So here it is with no processing on the group. And then with it. So you can hear, it's not a whole lot, you know, if you have really good samples like this, you don't have to do a whole lot to it, but just a little bit goes a long way here to really glue these together and give them that extra bit of fullness to make the track that much better. So with this, you can see we just have a little bit of reverb, just gives them some atmosphere. You can kind of hear that, you know, puts them all in the same space. And then we have the saturator, which is just fattening these up. And it also kind of glues them together volume-wise. And yeah, that's it for the cymbals. And then the last layer we have here is this little rim shot, which just sounds like this. So you can hear really simple, just like this nice little rim shot sample. I've just got it in here with a little bit of drum bus on it. And this is really kind of playing off of what the stabs are doing. Because you can hear it's like, I'll play it with the kick and the stabs. It's like, so it's just meant to kind of add a little bit of something extra to that. You know, it's like that little background there that you may not always notice when you're listening to a track, but this is what really goes into it, and this is how you really make a professional sounding track like this. So yeah, just like this little rim shot sample, you can see I drag the start time forward to make it hit a little bit more. And then we've got it going through a little bit of drum mush to make it a bit fatter. I've also shortened it with the amp envelope as you can see here. Oh yeah, again, it's just like that extra little sort of background layer that you may not always notice, but it's going to add a lot to the overall track. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets. All of that stuff in this video is available in the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because it's already available. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.